Speaking of forgetfulness, do you remember someone named Aragaki-san? He was at the dorm for a little while. I didn't really talk with him all that much. But whenever he crosses my mind, I feel this ache in my chest. Though, I'm not sure what. I get the feeling that there was something I had to do. I just don't know what it is or why I feel this way. Oh, um, sorry about that. You're really easy to talk to, so I kept going on and on. I appreciate that you always listen to what I have to say, though, Senpai. You even went with me to buy tea, and you don't treat me like I'm just a little kid. So, um, thanks for everything. What's up, losers? KD3 here. Did you miss me? I'm here to finally give you guys what you've been asking for. For the longest time, I've been intentionally neglecting a fan favorite character. Today, I will fix my mistake by giving you the ultimate Shinjiro guide. You will learn everything that you need to know about Shinjiro, and by the time you reach endgame with him, he'll be a killing machine. With my vision, I'll guide you all to victory. Sounds great! Let's start with the costumes. Shinjiro has five non-DLC costumes that he can use in this game. If you'd like to find out how to get all of these costumes, make sure you check out my costume guide where I showcase how to unlock every single costume in Persona 3 Reload. Next, we'll get to his combat characteristic. The first stage raises his attack and defense at the start of a battle, which is all you really need with this character. But if you keep doing dorm activities with him, his combat characteristic will upgrade to auto heat riser. Either way, it's amazing for him since he was born to just deal raw damage. Next, we'll move on to what equipment I prefer to use for Shinjiro. For the weapon, I choose to use the Corpse Rod. Not only does it give you 15 agility, which is one of Shinjiro's weakest stats, you also get auto charge, meaning Shinjiro can just come out of the gate doing massive damage when combined with his combat characteristic. You can get this weapon from the Antique Shop. You can get the Lord of the Flies' wing from Beel's Bub once he reaches level 88. For his armor, I just use the Armor of Light. For the shoes, I use the dragon boots to get the boosted crit rate. These can also be crafted in the antique shop. The accessory I choose to use is the Akasha Gata Bracers for the extra 50% strike damage since strike is Shinjiro's primary source of damage. This character is just damage, damage, damage. So whatever you have to get the damage up, strikes damage specifically, make sure you equip it. I know some people will say to equip the Rujo Ring for Arms Master instead. That's fine since Bloody Charge can remove so much of your HP, but I'm going for damage so I'm willing to potentially risk it all to get it. Finally, we'll move on to the skills that I picked for him. As you can tell from my build, Shinjiro's only purpose is to deal raw damage, and he's been given the combat characteristics and skills that support this playstyle, unlike a certain ace defective. We start with God's Hand and Akasha Arts, since Strike is Shinjiro's primary source of damage. These skills as well as this theurgy is where you'll be getting most of your damage. I know I have Brave Blade and Deathbound here, but enemies that resist one physical affinity usually resist them all, so you could replace one of these with Endure, especially since Shinjiro can lose health very fast. Shinjiro gets debilitate pretty early, so you can use this to pile on even more damage onto the enemies. Bloody Charge is Shinjiro's signature skill and allows him to sacrifice a significant amount of HP to get a damage and crit rate boost. This skill is amazing for getting to half health fast and boosting Shinjiro's theurgy gauge faster. Finally, we have high counter and firm stance to minimize the damage coming from enemies. By the way, Bloody Charge and Charge do not stack. If you use Bloody Charge while charged up, you'll just get the extra crit rate from it, not the damage boost. The only flaw I see in Shinjiro is the same one that I saw in Aegis. If your enemy can resist, reflect, or drain all types of physical damage, he'll just be a sitting duck until he gets his theurgy. The difference between him and Aegis though is that Aegis can get a weapon that bypasses the resistances, while Shinjiro cannot. And that's all you need to know about Shinjiro. Once you give him everything he needs, he'll be destroying those endgame bosses in no- oh. Another one. 